Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, uh, I wanted to ask the nominee, Chairman. You see, <coughs> uh, uh, he is here as a nominee <laughs> I forgot, chair. and I forgot not speaker. I forgot speaker. as I a chairman of any formation out there. Honestly, actually, I hope Mr. Speaker he was not referring to me being the chairman of ODM. I've already resigned. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, Mr. Speaker, you know, for when you call somebody for the last 15 years chairman, that yes. becomes his name. Yes. Any time I find I used to call him chairman. <laughs> now, Mr. Nominee, two th one thing I wanted to ask you is. Uh, that you have explained it very well, but you have come to this position, you are coming to this position at a time when the economy is not in a very good situation. And as you are aware, 70 sh shillings of the 100 shillings collected is going to pay debt. And Kenyans don't even know whether we are paying real debt or fake debt. That's what they are grappling with. So how will you ascertain what kind of debt we have, whether it is a fake debt or real debt? Secondly, as you are aware, the poor in this Kenya feel that this economy is rigged against them. They don't feel they are part of this economy. What measures will you put in place to tell Kenyans, the poor ones, that you are part and parcel of this economy? Issues of pending bills, Chair. Issues of 30% uh, of the budget. I mean, uh, nominee. No, no, nominee, nominee. Issues of 30%, how will you achieve 30% of our budget to go to the development expenditure? My last question is, nominee, you know very well, me and you, never believed in this bottom-up economy. Now we have found ourselves here. You know what we believed in. You know your principle must guide you. What, how are you going to marry this? different thoughts of bottom-up economy and what you believed in. You participated in manufacturing another uh, economic uh, manifesto. So tell me how you'll marry the two, uh, Mr. Nobini, this bottom thing now that you're inside. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me start by addressing... S leave the laughing to the public. Uh, uh, just, just listen and... Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. I think... Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to start uh, by responding to the questions raised by the leader of majority, my friend, uh, Kimani Chungwa. Yes, I agree. We have complained, Mr. Speaker, previously that our budget estimates, especially on revenue side, not realistic. In fact, I have, I'm persuaded that we have been using revenue as a balancing figure, revenue projection as a balancing figure. It's like what we do as a country is we look at our expenditure level, where we want to spend, how much we want to spend. Then once we get that total, then we ask ourselves how much can we raise from the loan or debt market external and domestic, then the remaining amount we put as revenue projection. That to me is very wrong. We must reform the economic policy department of national treasury. Reforming is, does not mean you lay off staff. I want to be very clear there. Just focus our economic projections so that they are realistic, they are based on evidence of economic growth. If previously you have not been able to collect so much, why do you then pretend that you can collect so much in the subsequent year? Like, Mr. Speaker, we have collected only 2.2 trillion this year from ordinary uh, revenue. Yet we are projecting to collect, we had projected initially before uh, the, uh, the challenges we faced with the finance bill to collect 2.9. That is a whooping 700 billion increase. That was not realistic. Raj, now it has come back to, or come down to 2.6. So we must be realistic in our revenue projections. But even be that as it may, we must also still enhance revenue collection by reforming KRA, because we are still under collecting. But in terms of uh, budgeting and projections, I agree with Honorable Kimani Chungwa that we are going, going forward, we are going to be more realistic so that we don't have big budget deficits and budget revisions in the course of the year as we have had it previously. In terms of how do, I, do we address the challenges of collection of taxes, 
custom duties, it is, and I mentioned it. The system is porous. We must make sure that we automate it and automate it properly. Sometimes we pretend to be using automation, yet we use outdated systems, systems that are just aiding uh, the leakage of uh, revenue instead of helping. We must carry out proper review and uh, evaluation of KRA. I have the first meetings, I will guarantee this committee, if you approve my nomination to become the CS National Treasury, my first meetings will be focused on how to reform KRA. Because without that, we are not going to succeed in revenue mobilization. Honorable Junette, you've raised the issue of debt and you have asked how do we determine real from fake debt. I don't want to use it fake or real, but I talked about accountability, debt accountability, public debt accountability. And I said, I am committing that we must try to make this a statutory document so that every Kenyan knows how much we, we owe to who and at what cost. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about in debt management is we must manage our liability. We have to restructure our debts. Let me just, just give me one minute, Mr. Speaker, to say the following. That if you look at how our debt was structured, especially external debt, in 2010, we had 60% of that debt, 66 actually, under multilateral, which are concessionary loans, and only 4% on commercial debt. We moved to a point where 31% in 2020, 31% of our debt was commercial debt. Averaging interest rate is 8 to 9%. That is not sustainable for an economy. It is now coming down, it is 23%. My focus is to have commercial debt at no more than 5% of our debt portfolio, external debt portfolio, and have 75% of our debt under multilateral debt, and only 20% 20, 20 or thereabout on bilateral debt. With that, you can clearly reduce the cost of debt. But something else about debt is, Mr. Speaker, and sample this, honorable members. Our debt portfolio is 50-50, almost. External, domestic. Yet, interest payable per year on external debt is 260 billion. On domestic debt is 700 and almost 50 billion. Three times we are overborrowing domestically. And we have raised the interest rates of borrowing domestically. I know I'm one of the people, if you look at my, my wealth declaration, I own, I have a government bond, a bought of 13 million. And I'm getting almost 16% returns. That is unsustainable. We must have a conversation. Mr. Speaker, and not to uh, scare anyone, we must have a conversation with banks. We are not going to control interest We want you to give the country hope. Yes. And you are doing so. Go yeah. Yes. We are not, I'm not going to advocate for interest rates control, as in setting the rates to be charged. It had very disastrous result when we attempted that, remember, through a legislation. But banks promised us, Mr. Speaker, banks promised us that if we remove the rate caps, they would loan even more to the private sector. Presently, that is not the, tr the case. In fact, bank executives sometimes can just sit and take teas and uh, do nothing but still make money for shareholders by buying government bonds and government bills. We must move away from that. Actually, we have crowded out private sector. You can see the youth is up in arms. They have no jobs because the private sector is not borrowing money from the uh, uh, from it's the, not lending. Is, the private sector is oh, not, not borrowing, borrowing money banks, yes. to invest. And so we can create jobs. Yes. I know that one of the reasons why we have been raising the interest rate is to control inflation. Inflation has reasonably been controlled now at 4.6%. We must also be alive to the fact that we must balance the two. There must mm -hmm. be a net of effect so that we also grow our economy. Thank you. Uh, finally, there was the issue of... Um, how, what do we do about the poor and the pending bills? Pending bills is a serious matter, Mr. Speaker.